And one of the things that I'm really excited about, and we, we talked about yesterday, um, is the amount of uh, good work from Monash that finds its way into our packages. Um, maybe you're going to talk about that a little bit, Emmy, but if not, get ready for a question from me uh, after that. Um, please, the floor is yours. Oh, sure thing, David, and thank you. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm Amy Tanaka, and I am one of the faculty members at the Department of Economics and Business Statistics. Uh, and today I'm going to be showcasing our department, along with spotlighting some of the works of our department members. So unlike the previous ones that we've seen, which was a center, we are actually a department, um, but we are quite a big department because we have about 50 faculty members um, and they all work in economics, business analytics, actual statistics and data science. Um, so if I list all the credentials and achievements of our staff, I think we will be here for a long time. So let me keep it very brief. Um, quite a number of our staff have been um, acknowledged and recognized as distinguished individuals. Um, if I give some examples, um, our head of department, Rob Hyman, has just recently been elected to the Australian Academy of Science. Um, and also we've got fellows in um, Academy of Social Science, uh, which includes Rob, um, GT, Gail, as well as Heather, um, and uh, Fashid, and our, some of our emeritus professors. Um, now, this is like a word cloud that I made from the keywords that all of our staff are supplied. Um, and you can see here that actually quite a lot of people do have interests around econometrics, actuarial science, time series forecasting. But we do have some ones that look a little bit unusual, like quantitative genetics, um, which kind of really attests to the fact that really statistics can span a number of um, quantitative areas. Okay, hey, just to highlight some of the works that people have worked on, um, on the top is like uh, projects that people have worked on, um, generally associated with a particular grant. Um, so a number of people have worked on COVID-19 modeling, um, forecasting or visualization. Um, and then we've got uh, Rob and George who did forecasting in tourism. Um, Heather, uh, Fashid and Ben have been working on forecasting employment under different scenarios. Um, Bonsu also had a look at um, understanding the savings habit and a, a number of different um, retirement solutions as well. Then we have um, Gail, Rob, David, Zuo, and Lewis, who are working on really state-of-the-art Bayesian computational tools to really produce accurate fit-for-purpose predictions. Um, then we've got these areas. Um, so there's a fair bit of people um, in econometrics, um, but econometrics is also a very broad area. So we've got applied econometrics, econometrics education, financial econometrics, macroeconomics, um, and microeconomics as well. Now, just to give some spotlight, um, so here what um, I'm showing is uh, a work by Klaus, um, who's a founding member of what's called the Soda Labs. Now, Soda Labs was a joint venture between some of the staff in our department, as well as the Department of Economics at Monash. Um, and what they do is they get social science insights from alternative data. So they could be looking at things like satellite image data, um, text data, interactivity, and so many other things um, in order to try to really look into some of the social behaviors in the society. Um, so in the study that I've um, shown here, um, you can see that you, they are inferring the sleeping pattern from analyzing millions of data points that are associated with really the um, household internet usage. Um, so we've got also staff that work on how effects, um, how things affect policy. Um, so here I am spotlighting on Xian's work, which she has done a lot in terms of really analyzing large amounts of health data, um, which could be surveys as well. Um, and she did, she did things like, for example, on this study over here, um, she basically looked at how much it costs to the individual for waiting for hip replacement um, going in a public system as opposed to going straight into a public a private system. Now, 
there are a number of staffs who work outside of the traditional areas of economics. Um, and again, partly statistics really spans a number of quantitative areas. Um, so here, um, Dai and Shan worked on bushfire data. Dai has been involved in Australian Cancer Atlas as well as physics data. We also have Patricia Menendez, who used to work at the um, Australian Institute of Marines, um, where she did a lot of work around the environment and ecological statistics. Um, then we've got a number of people working in agriculture area. Uh, Lauren Kennedy was interested in how the intricacies associated with collecting human data. So that has involvement in things like ethics and privacy concerns. Um, we've got also bioinformatics. Um, and also we had uh, Rob um, as well as Dai, um, along with a student, um, Jeremy, um, looked at analyzing um, election and census data together. Um, and uh, we've got a number of staff working in actuary. Um, Rob's, um, as well as Prasala, um, did work on water quality. Um, and this did involve um, a number of people from QUT as well. Um, and then also forecasting for the energy usage by Rob and um, uh, George. Now, uh, Besides all the foundational theory and methodology, uh, many members of our business analytics group, um, which is a subset of the department, um, which we call the non-uniform business, Monash business analytics team, or simply NUMBATS, where we translate methodology um, into really tools that other people can use. So these tools that we develop are mostly written as an R package, um, but we also have like our new professor of analytics engagement, Dan Simpson, um, who is a core developer for the um, program STAN, um, and uh, Lauren Kennedy is also involved with STAN as well. Um, so the some spotlights on the tools. Um, so the tools that you see here are essentially um, designed so that it's focused on the user. It's a human-centered design tools. Um, and so here we have a whole lot of um, packages that was developed so that you can do time series analysis and forecasting in a tidy fashion. Um, a lot of the development was made by um, the supervisory team of Rob and Dai. Um, along with their former um, students, such as Ira Wang and Mitchell Ohala Wild. Um, so you can see the range of the uh, packages and who's been involved. Um, then there's also the gram of experiment design, which I've been working on. Um, and so this is a case where we're trying to make tools so that people can actually specify an experimental design in a way that makes sense to them. Um, and also visualize that experimental design once it's been constructed. Then we also have work on data visualization, um, which um, Dai Cook has been quite a champion of. Um, so She's got a package um, that's called Nullable. Um, so originally made by, I believe, Hallie Wickham um, when she, he was a student of Dye Cook. Um, and it's the same for the tall one, um, also made by um, Hallie Wickham, but maintained currently by Dye Cook. Um, now, Dai has been a champion really in fostering students um, because all these um, tools are really the product of her current or former students, essentially. Um, so all these ones are to do with high um, dimensional data visualizations. Um, and over here, we've got the visual inference tool. Essentially, the idea behind this is that um, when you look at them um, plots, you tend to overinterpret them. So you've got to really calibrate them um, according, just like we do for when we're looking at um, statistical summaries. Um, then here we've got a spatial visualization where Stephanie Kovakian um, made a R package um, where essentially here, uh, when you're looking at spatial data, you can um, get the wrong impression because uh, the land can span like a big area, but the number of people in that big area could be small. Um, well, if you want to like know more about it um, or get in contact to collaborate with certain people, I've got a whole link here. Uh, in particular, I've got the link to the slide itself as well. Um, so you can go back to the slide and have a look and feel free to reach out to these people. Um, in the spirit of reproducibility, I do provide the code for the slides, which are all written in R. Uh, 